Good evening, aspirants. Welcome to the Hindi News Analysis by Shankar Ayes Academy for the date 14th August 2019. These are the list of articles chosen for today's analysis. It has been provided along with the page numbers of different Hindu editions, namely Chennai, Bengaluru, Delhi, and Tiruvannamalai edition. The link for the handwritten notes in the PDF format and the time stamping for the displayed articles is given in the description box below. And for the benefit of smartphone users, it is provided also in the comment section. Let's move on to the first article analysis for today. This news article is a news because the election commission is said to have conducted its first meeting yesterday. That is on 13th August 2019. This meeting is for the delimitation exercise in Jammu and Kashmir. This was necessitated under the Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Act of 2019. The syllabus relevant for the analysis of this news article has been highlighted here. The article states that the election commission has conducted a meeting to discuss about the delimitation exercise that has to be carried out in the Jammu and Kashmir Union territory. We know that after the assent of the president, the Jammu and Kashmir Reorganisation Bill of 2019 has become an enforceable legislation, and the legislation has reorganised. the erstwhile state of jammu and kashmir into two union territories according to the section 6 of jammu and kashmir reorganization act of 2019 we now have 28 states and nine union territories we also know that the jammu and kashmir union territory is made to have a legislative assembly and the union territory of ladakh was made without a legislative assembly so This means elections have to be conducted in Jammu and Kashmir for the legislative assembly. Earlier that is before the reorganization the total number of seats in the legislative assembly of Jammu and Kashmir was 111. This includes 24 seats belonging to the region of Pakistan occupied Kashmir and 4 seats from the Ladakh region. So if you subtract the 4 seats of Ladakh the number of seats of present Jammu and Kashmir union territory in the erstwhile jammu and kashmir assembly is 107 but the jammu and kashmir reorganization act of 2019 mentions three things with respect to the number of members in the legislative assembly first thing it mentions is in the section 14 subsection 3 it states that the total number of uh, seats in the legislative assembly of the union territory of jammu and kashmir is to be filled by persons chosen by direct election shall be 107 then secondly in section 60 it states that the number of seats in the legislative assembly of union territory of jammu and kashmir shall be increased from 107 to 114 and delimitation of the constituencies may be determined by the election commission then in section 15 it states the lieutenant governor may nominate two members to the legislative assembly to give representation to women if in his opinion women are not adequately represented in the legislative assembly the news article states that if the number is to be increased from 107 to 114 then the number of seats in the legislative assembly excluding the pakistan occupied kashmir is 90 now ladakh is not with jammu and kashmir This effectively means there is an increase of seven members in the legislative assembly compared to the number of persons elected from the present territory of erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir. This is because in the erstwhile state, the present uh, territory of Jammu and Kashmir Union Territory elected only eighty-three seats, excluding the twenty-four seats from. Pakistan occupied Kashmir now this number shall be increased to 90 as per section 60 of the JNK reorganization act of 2019 this means previous legislative assembly constituencies has to be redrawn so there has to be a lot of discussions for drawing the limits of the new legislative assembly constituencies that is why the news article mentions that in what part of JNK the seven seats will be formed remains to be decided Now here the word delimitation means to mark the boundary or limits of in our context it means to mark the boundaries of legislative assemblies of new union territory of Jammu and Kashmir now the section 60 mentions that the delimitation for the purpose of increasing the number of seats from 107 to 114 may be determined by the election commission of India also 
Section 62 clause 2 states that the readjustment of the constituencies as provided under section 60 in the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir into assembly constituencies shall be carried by the Delimitation Commission to be constituted under the Delimitation Act of 2002. Now, as per the section 14 subsection 6 of Reorganization Act, seats shall be reserved for the scheduled castes and the scheduled tribes in the Legislative Assembly of the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. The news article mentions that this provision could tip the scales of one region because this region has the population of around 8 lakhs. Here, tip the scales means that something that could be the main deciding factor in favor of a particular region by reservation. People in this region are those uh, who came as refugees from Sialkot to Jammu and Kashmir. These people have not been given any voting rights in the erstwhile state legislative assembly. But it is highly expected that they will be given voting rights for the upcoming election of legislative assembly of the new union territory. It is said that most of the persons among the refugees are persons belonging to the scheduled castes. The news reports are saying that most of the refugees are at present are settled in camps across the Jammu region in the Jammu and Kashmir. And uh, the section 60 clause 2 sub clause C of the Reorganization Act states that constituencies in which seats are to be reserved for the scheduled castes and the scheduled tribes shall be located as far as practicable in the areas where the proportion of their population to the total population is the largest. That is why the news article mentions that the provision could favor the reservation of seats for the scheduled castes and scheduled tribes could be in favor of the region that is dominated by the maximum number of persons belonging to the scheduled castes. All the efforts related to the delimitation has to be completed so that the elections for the legislative assembly can be conducted at the earliest. It is expected that if all these exercises are carried out as planned, then the earliest possible time for assembly elections in Jammu and Kashmir Union Territory would be in March 2020. With this, we come to the end of this news analysis. Now, this news article mentions few facts with respect to the delimitation discussions initiated by the Election Commission. These discussions are with respect to the seven extra seats which are necessitated under Section 60 of the Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Act of 2019. The syllabus will be the same as that of the previous news article. This news article presents the statement made by the ex officio member of the Delimitation Commission and the former chief election commissioner. He said that the increase in the number of seats was an issue which is a political decision of the parliament. Also he added that the commission would start the work of delimitation exercise as soon as possible as required under the law. The law he refers would be the Delimitation Act of 2002 and also the Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Act of 2019. The news article mentions the procedure that could be adopted in the delimiting exercise. For having some kind of equality with respect to the number of voters, total population of Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir will be divided by 114 seats. The news article says 114, but we know that this number also includes the 24 seats from the Pakistan occupied Kashmir region of Jammu and Kashmir. So we are not sure whether the total population will be inclusive of the number of people living in the Pakistan occupied region or will the number of seats with which the total population will be divided is to be 90. Now after finding the average number of voters for the required number of seats, they have to also ensure that the boundary of constituencies are consistent and compatible as much as possible with the administrative units of union territories. These administrative units could be the divisions and the districts in the union territory. The news article mentions that the delimitation will be based on the 2011 census till the year 2026. This is based on section 14 subsection 7 of the Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Act of 2019. Now the part 5 of this act deals with the delimitation of constituencies. This part defines that the delimitation commission means the delimitation commission to be constituted under section 3 of the delimitation act of 2002. This commission shall be constituted by the central government. 
the news article also talks about the people belonging to the scheduled tribes of gujjar and bakarwals they follow a migratory pattern of lifestyle in search of resources such as water grassland etc they trek upwards to mountainous areas in summers and in winters they travel downwards to the regions of jammu this is because they are mainly involved in animal rearing and therefore they are dependent on the grazing land this is one of the main reasons for their migration lifestyle their lifestyle and migration pattern are therefore heavily influenced by geography there is few other information that we can take from the news article such as about 56.2% of the population of jammu and kashmir lives in the division of kashmir there are two divisions in this one is jammu division and the other is kashmir division the remaining population that is around 43.8% are living in the jammu division the district with the largest population in jammu and kashmir belongs to the jammu division this district is the jammu district this district is followed by the srinagar district in the kashmir division then the union territory of ladakh has a population of around 2.7 lakhs now these are the some of extra facts about jammu and kashmir that you can take note of with this we have come to the end of this article analysis this practice question will be discussed in the last session moving on to the next article which is an editorial about the concerns raised about the national medical commission act of 2019 now remember that in the article it has been mentioned as bill but the bill was passed by both the houses of the parliament and the president also gave assent on august 8th so now this bill has become an act the syllabus that can be linked with this discussion has been given here for your reference the national medical commission act of 2019 aims to improve the medical education system in india according to the prime minister the act will improve transparency accountability and quality in the governance of medical education in the country but ever since its introduction as a bill it faced with protests by different sections of population including the medical professionals this news article examines the important concerns that are raised by the protesters now let us discuss the important concerns that were raised and let us analyze from the author's point of view the first concern is about the proposed national eligibility come entrance test that is neat and the national exit test that is next it has been proposed under section 14 and section 15 of the act respectively according to the author in the past years a separate neat was being conducted for undergraduate and postgraduate courses and in addition to this there were different examinations for prominent medical institutions like aims that is all india institute of medical sciences and jipmer that is jawaharlal institute of postgraduate medical education and research but the act proposes a single neat exam for admission to undergraduate medical education in all medical institutions that are regulated under this act so this in turn avoids multiple counseling processes now in this the next examination will act as the final year mbbs examination across india it is an entrance test to the post graduate level next will be a licentiate exam it will provide license for medical graduates to practice so according to this author this exam aims to reduce disparities or differences in the skill sets of doctors who are graduating from different institutions also this next exam will be a single licentiate exam for graduate across the world which means even foreign graduates are included in this exam so the author states that the government has actually implemented a one nation one exam in the medical education then the second concern is about the section 32 of the act this section authorizes the government to allow non medical degree holders to practice medicine as community health providers but the protesters believes that this will legalize quacks in the country here quack is a person who dishonestly claims to have special knowledge and skill in medicine so the protesters believe that this act will create more frauds in the medical field if you consider the 2011 census almost 70% of the population lives in the rural india 
but according to the author the present ratio of doctors in urban and rural area is 3.8 is to 1 so almost 27000 doctors serve about 650000 villages in india the author mentions a who report which shows that nearly 80% of allopathic doctors in the rural areas are without a medical qualification here allopathy is the conventional or the modern medicine now this nmc act attempts to address this gap by utilizing modern medicine professional in the rural areas who are without a medical degree that is who are actually not doctors so they will provide primary and preventive health care now to support this provision of the act the author cites the example of china thailand and united kingdom where such integration resulted in better health outcomes and it is also to be noted that the indian states of assam and chhattisgarh have experienced with community health workers so the author believes that the move to provide limited license will not legalize quacks because the act mentions that they need to qualify certain criteria as specified by the regulation next the third concern is regarding the capping of the fees now this is given in the section 10 clause 1 sub clause i of the act this provision allows the commission to determine the fees and all other charges with respect to 50% of the seats in private medical institutions and also in the deemed to be universities but those who criticize the act believe that at present the state government determines fees for minimum of 85% of seats in private medical institutions so the cap of 50% would create a situation of economic reservation where only rich students will be able to get seats the author says that it is an open secret that private medical colleges are capitation fee driven by capitation fee the author means the fees that is collected by the private medical institutions and this fee is based on making profit only not only this the private medical colleges resort to discretionary management of quota and they often face charges of corruption but if you consider the indian medical council act of 1956 there is no provision for fee regulation so the author believes that the nmc act removes this discretion and allows national medical commission to frame guidelines for determining not just fees but all other charges in that 50% of the seats so in turn this will benefit the poor and meritorious students the author says that setting up a medical college requires huge investment so a cap on fees is necessary but there is also a need for incentives to attract private investors so the act also provides for the rating of medical colleges this is expected to benefit students as they will be able to make informed decisions before seeking admissions to particular colleges then the next and fourth concern is regarding reducing the number of elected representatives and increasing the number of nominated representatives in the commission the author cites the report of former vice chancellor of niti aayog according to that report the existing electoral process in the commission was flawed compromised and it is not best suited for its functioning in the present system the recognized doctors elect the members of medical council of india but the new act proposes an extensive mix of elected and nominated representatives the act also addresses the concerns of states this is done by adding members from state medical councils and universities then the fifth concern is regarding the overriding powers that is given to the center one of the such power is to remove members of nmc including the chairperson the author says that the existing medical council of india does not pay attention to the government's directions all the time but the citizens expect government to address the issues during public emergencies hence the government should be able to give directions so that the nmc must comply with the government policies so if they do not comply with the policies then they can remove the members of nmc or they can even remove the chairperson of nmc so the use of such authority would follow the principle of natural justice it means that the opinion of nmc would be sought 
before giving directions. Then as a conclusion, the author says that a section of the society has a negative perception against the select clauses of the act. But at the same time, they fail to highlight other features of the act. One of the such feature is that the act establishes the diplomat of national board under section 37 of the act. This recognizes the medical qualification granted by statutory or other bodies in India which are subjected to the regulations of the act. The act also promotes medical pluralism by encouraging the interface between homeopathy, Indian system of medicines and modern system of medicines. This is given under section 50 of the act. Here medical pluralism means the use of more than one medical system like conventional and modern system to treat illness. The author says this act is outcome focused because it aims to increase the number of doctors, it aims to improve their quality and skills and it also aims to reduce corruption in the system. Also the section 16 of the act enables the central government to constitute autonomous boards with segregated functions such as autonomous boards for undergraduates, for postgraduate, for assessment and rating etc. This will avoid the conflict of interests and it will reduce rent seeking opportunities. That is it will reduce the manipulation of public policy for making profits. Then the section 34 of the act provides for imprisonment or fine or both for the quacks also. So the author believes that the act is a culmination or conclusion of efforts by successive governments to reform the medical education in the country. Such reforms are essential to assess the improvements in the healthcare. So the NMC act meets the primary need of more medical professionals in the country and it is just the beginning. With this we have come to the end of this article discussion. The display practice question will be discussed in the last session. Moving on to the next article analysis which is about GI tag. The discussion can be linked to the given syllabus that has been provided here for your reference. The news article states that the famous Parani Panjam rhythm has been granted the geographical indication tag or the GI tag. It is to be noted that this is the first time a temple prasadam from the state of Tamil Nadu has been bestowed or granted with the GI tag. Here prasadam means the sacred food. Now also remember that one another famous prasadam already has a GI tag. That prasadam is Tirupati Laddu. It is from the state of Andhra Pradesh. It was given the tag in the year 2009. Now one prasadam from Tamil Nadu that is Parani Panjamratam has been given the GI tag. The Parani Panjamratam is a food stuff. If you see in the name Panjamritam, Pancha means 5. So the Panjamritam is a combination of 5 natural substances. They are banana, jaggery, cow ghee, honey and cardamom. Along with these natural substances, dates and diamond sugar candies are also added for the flavor. This Panjamritam is an Abhishega Prasadam which means it is a food that is a religious offering. It is one of the main offerings for Lord Dandayudapani Swami who is the presiding deity of Arunmegu Dandayudapani Swami temple. This temple is situated on the Parani hills of Dindukkal district in Tamil Nadu. So the geographical area for production of Panjamritam is the Parani town in Dindukkal district of Tamil Nadu. This Panjamritam is served in a semi-solid state. Now based on the ingredients you can also say that this panjam rhythm is sweet in taste. Now let us see some of the unique features of this sacred food. First it is prepared in a natural method without addition of any preservatives or artificial ingredients. Then the parani panjam rhythm that is originating from the parani is not subjected to any chemical process then not even a single drop of water is added during the preparation of the panjamratam. Now this gives the parani panjamratam its classic semi-solid consistency and a classic taste also. The parani panjamratam is heated at a particular temperature. This keeps it fresh and consumable for a longer time as no preservatives are added to it. It is said that parani panjamratam has a unique and aromatic flavor with medicinal properties as compared to other panjamratam that is produced in the place. Then if you see the method of its production also includes a unique process 
This results in the Panjamritam that is being produced in Parani to have its own identity. The whole process of its production is automated. This is because there is an increasing demand and through this automated production it is ensured that hygienic aspects are highly maintained. In the olden days the Parani Panjamritam was prepared on the top of the hill in the traditional manner and most of the preparation was manual only. But the demand for Panjam Rhythm was increasing, so it was decided to mechanize and modernize the production units of Parani Panjam Rhythm. Then the temple authorities approached the Central Food Technical Research Institute or CFTRI Mysore for the advice on the mechanization of production unit. Here mechanization means introduction of machines or automatic devices into a process. Then based on the advice of CFTRI, a separate mechanized unit for preparation of Parani Panjamritam was established. So at present the preparation of Parani Panjamritam is fully automated and it is hygienically produced. Also the Parani Panjamritam is prepared under the guidance given by the Central Food Technical Research Institute that is CFTRA Mysore. The raw materials are also subjected to CFTRA quality test and it is prepared only under the guidance of CFTRA report given by the CFTRA. Now also know that the CFTRA or Central Food Technical Research Institute is a constituent laboratory of the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research New Delhi that is CFTRA is a CSIR laboratory. The CFTRA came into existence during 1950. Its objective is to advance the knowledge and to apply that knowledge in the area of food science and food technology for the society. Now let us revise what is GI tag and its importance which we discussed some 15 days ago. Normally as humans we have a desire for quality and genuine premium products. These products have distinct characteristics and they originate from a particular region. These distinct characteristics were the identification for that particular product and these products became so important that those particular regions started specializing in producing these unique products. This led to the identification of such goods as originating from a particular region and over a period of time those products became renowned or famous globally for its distinct characteristics. So, demand for such products started uh, rising among the consumers. Now, this demand gave rise for counterfeit or fake products. These fake products began to damage the image of genuine products. So, the genuine products have to be protected by safeguarding the interest of the producers and the interest of consumers also. This protection led to the evolution and conceptualization of geographical indications. So, Geographical indications or GIs are a class of intellectual property which is used primarily to identify products as originating from a particular geographical area. The term geographical indications was first used in TRIPS agreement that is trade related aspects of intellectual property rights agreement. According to this uh, TRIPS agreement geographical indications are indications which identify a good or product as originating in a territory of a country or a region or locality in that territory. Now in that the product should have a given quality, reputation or other characteristic that is essentially attributable to its geographical origin. Then India also enacted the geographical indications of goods registration and protection act of 1999. This act came into force with effect from 15th September 2003. The act is administered by the Controller General of Patents, Designs and Trademarks who is the registrar of geographical indications. Now also remember the geographical indications registry is located at Chennai. Now if you see the objective of this act is threefold. Firstly it is the specific law governing the geographical indications of goods in the country which could adequately protect the interest of producers of such goods. Secondly, it excludes unauthorized persons from misusing geographical indications and it protects consumers from deception or duplication. 
and thirdly it promotes goods bearing Indian geographical indications in the export market also. Now this act defines a geographical indication as an indication which identifies such goods as agricultural goods, natural goods or manufactured goods as originating or manufactured in the territory of a country or a region or locality in that country. Then such goods should have the given quality, reputation or other characteristic which is essentially attributable to its geographical origin. Then in case where such goods are manufactured goods, then one of the activities of either the production of the good or processing of the good or preparation of the good that is concerned should take place in that territory or in that region or in that locality. Now the goods not only include agricultural, natural or manufactured goods but also it includes any goods of uh, handicraft or goods of industry and it also includes food stuff as we saw today. So now what is the benefit of registration of geographical indications? Now this registration confers legal protection to geographical indications in India. It prevents unauthorized use of a registered geographical indication by others. Then it provides legal protection to Indian geographical indications which in turn boost exports. Then it promotes economic prosperity of producers of those goods which is produced in a geographical territory. Now also remember that the registration of a geographical indication is valid for a period of 10 years only. After that it has to be renewed. Now some examples of this uh, GI tags uh, include Basmati rice, Darjeeling tea, Kanjipuram silk sari, Nagpur orange, Kolapuri chappal, Bikanri bhujia, then Agra pheta. Now if you remember some 15 days ago we also discussed that Kodekanal Malipunda and the Odisha Rashgulla was given the GI tag. So remember recently the Kodekanal Malipundu, the Odisha Rashgulla and now the Parani Panchamritam has been granted the GI tag. With this we have come to the end of this article discussion. The practice question displayed here will be discussed in the last session. Moving on to the next article discussion which is about the decline in automobile sales. The discussion can be linked to the syllabus that has been given here for your reference. The automobile industry in India is witnessing a large scale drop in sales. The monthly sales was declined by 18.71 percentage for July. According to the article, this was the worst ever decline in monthly sales in the last 19 years. Previously, the biggest decline was uh, witnessed in December 2000. There was a decline of 21.81 percentage. Now, one of the main reason for this kind of decline is the poor consumer demand. Now, this poor consumer demand forces the industry to go for cutting jobs in order to reduce the impact. Earlier, the automobile industry demanded for a stimulus to reduce this decline. They have reiterated the same demand to the government ahead of the festive season. As per the report of uh, automobile industry body SIAM that is Society of Indian Automobile Manufacturers, the passenger vehicle segment witnessed the worst decline. There was almost 31 percent decline in July 2019. Here the passenger vehicles includes cars, utility vehicles, vans etc. All of these witnessed a decline in sales. Similarly, the two wheelers sales has decreased by 16.82 percentage in July 2019. Now two wheeler category includes scooters and motorcycles. Now for the commercial vehicles the decline in growth was 25.71 percentage for July 2019. So based on the reduction in sales the SIAM has uh, demanded a revival package from the government. It said that the industry is doing everything to promote the sales such as providing huge discounts also. But still there is a decline in sales and this decline continues to result in loss of jobs. The industry body has admitted that casual and temporary workers are losing jobs. The decline in sales will lead to decline in component production. So it is expected to result in over a million job losses. Further with the decline in sales hundreds of dealerships are forced to shut down. So this will result in further job loss. If you remember earlier the industry representatives had met the union finance minister and they raised several demands. 
such as uh, rationalization of GST to the automobile sector, it is presently between 18 percentage to 28 percentage. Here by rationalization, they mean the a reduction in GST of automobile and the associated industries will bring down the final prices of the vehicle. So, this will boost the demand. Next, they also demanded the government to take steps to increase the liquidity in the economy. This is because the crisis that was associated with NBFCs, that is non-banking finance companies, have affected the purchasing powers of the people. Usually, the NBFCs finance the people to buy vehicles by providing loans. So, the reduction in lending capacity of NBFCs following the crisis in the sector has reduced the flow of money in the economy. Then the industry also expected uh, some sort of import duty to discourage the import of auto components from China. It is estimated that 27 percentage of total auto components uh, which are worth over 1 billion US dollars are imported from China. Now this adversely impacts the less competitive Indian auto components manufacturers. So the industry expects a tariff duty on import of auto components from China. Then the industry also demanded to give more focus to the Make in India initiative because this initiative will give incentive for auto component manufacturers in India and uh, it will be a desirable step to do. So this would enable them to be more competitive as compared to the foreign industries. Then they also demanded that uh, as the BS6 pollution norms will be implemented by 1st April 2020, the government should give a stimulus package to the industry because the BS6 pollution norms requires huge additional investment by the automobile manufacturers to adhere to the norms. This would further increase the price of vehicles. So that is why the industry is expecting certain stimulus package from the government. Now it is to be noted that almost 1 million or 10 lakh people are directly employed by the automobile sector in India. The industries associated with the automobile industry such as small component makers, dealerships etc provides jobs for almost 19 million people that is they provide jobs for 1 crore 9 lakh people overall. So because of the recent crisis in the sector almost 2.3 lakh people have lost their jobs recently. So the government must look into the issue and they should address the concerns in the industry as soon as possible. With this we have come to the end of this article discussion. Now we have come to the last session for the day that is the practice questions discussion session. Now in this first question two statements have been given we have to choose the correct statement. The first statement states India comprises of 29 states and 7 union territories. Now after reading this statement you may think this is a very simple statement but actually this statement is wrong because when the erstwhile state of Andhra Pradesh was bifurcated India had 29 states and 7 union territories because at that time Telangana became the 29th state. But now when the state of Jammu and Kashmir has been bifurcated, it has been reorganized into two union territories. So that means from the 29 states, we have lost one state that is one state has to be reduced. So now we have 28 states and we have additionally two union territories. So the total number of union territories is nine union territories. And also know that the section 6 of the Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Act of 2019 explicitly says that so now we have totally 28 states and 9 union territories. So this statement is wrong. Then if you look at the second statement it states 4 of the union territories are with legislative assembly. Now when we had 7 union territories we know that Delhi and Puducherry were the union territories which had legislative assembly. Now among the union territories of Ladakh and uh, Jammu and Kashmir only Jammu and Kashmir has legislative assembly not Ladakh. So now totally we have only three union territories which are with legislative assembly. So this statement is also wrong. So the correct answer to this question is neither one nor two. Now this next question is with respect to Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Act of 2019. The first statement states it abolishes the legislative council that was in the erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir. 
Now, this statement is correct. This is because the section 57 of the Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Act of 2019 abolishes the Legislative Council of the State of Jammu and Kashmir. Then if you look at the second statement, it states it provides for increasing the number of seats in the Legislative Assembly of the Union Territory of JNK from 107 to 114. Now, this statement is also correct because this statement is based on section 60 subsection 1 of the Reorganization Act. During our analysis, we have uh, analyzed these numbers and the numbers of seats with respect to the Pakistan occupied Kashmir, Ladakh and the region excluding Pakistan occupied Kashmir and Ladakh. So, this statement is correct. Now, if you look at the third statement, it states the act provides for the nomination of two members to the legislative assembly to give representation to the Anglo-Indian community. If the lieutenant governor feels that they are not adequately represented in the legislative assembly. Now, during the analysis, we saw that under section 15 of the act, the lieutenant governor of the union territory of Jammu and Kashmir may nominate two members to the legislative assembly to give representation to women. If in his opinion, women are not adequately represented in the legislative assembly. But there is no mention of a particular community in this section. So, we do not know whether they belong to Anglo-Indian community only or not. So, this statement is wrong. Now, after seeing the statement, you may confuse it with the provisions of the Indian constitution in which the article 331 says that the president of India will nominate two members from Anglo-Indian community to the Lok Sabha. So, do not confuse these two statements. The question asks for the correct statements. Here statement 1 and 2 are the correct statements. So, the final answer to this question is option C 1 and 2 only. Now, this question is based on geographical indications. Two statements have been given and we have to choose the correct statement. The first statement states the geographical indications of goods registration and protection act was enacted in the year 1999. So, we have to ensure whether this act was enacted in this year or not. Yes, this act was enacted in this year that is in the year 1999. So, this statement is correct. If you look at the next statement, it states the geographical indications registry is located at Chennai. Yes, this statement is also correct. The geographical indications registry is located at Chennai only. And also remember that the controller general of patents, designs and trademarks is the registrar of geographical indications. The question asks for the correct statements. Here statement 1 and statement 2 both are correct. So, the final correct answer to this question is option C both 1 and 2. Now, let us see one main question with respect to GS paper 2. The question is the health sector in India needs continuous reforms to provide effective health care service. In this context, analyze the concerns associated with the National Medical Commission Act of 2019. Now, for answering this question, you can say that this act aims to improve the medical education system in India. The Prime Minister's comment on this act, that is, he said that it will improve transparency, accountability and quality in the governance of medical education in the country. Then for the concerns, you can say the question asks to analyze the concerns raised by this act. Now, during our discussion, we discussed five concerns with respect to this act. So, you can mention all of them, such as the first concern was with respect to the proposed NEET and NEXT examinations. This act proposes a single NEET exam for admission to undergraduate medical education in all medical institutions that are regulated under the act. You can say that this uh, in turn avoids multiple counseling processes. Then you can say the next examination is a licentiate exam because it will provide license for medical graduates to practice medicine. So, it will reduce the disparities in the skill sets of doctors who are graduating from different institutions. Then the next concern is with respect to the community health providers where you can say the protesters believe that this provision will legalize quacks in the country. Either you can support this statement or you can use the stand taken by the author of that editorial. Like you can say that the NMC Act attempts to address the gap 
of doctors in the urban areas and the rural areas because this act provides for the utilization of modern medical professionals in the rural areas who are without medical degree to provide primary and preventive health care you can say that this measure was successful in different countries such as china thailand and united kingdom then you can say that the states of assam and chatisgarh have experience of using the community health providers so the other parts of the country can take example from these countries and states then the third concern was with respect to the capping of the fees because the act says that the commission will determine the fees and all other charges with respect to 50% of the seats in the private medical institutions and in the deemed to be universities so this will benefit the poor and meritorious students but the critics feel that this is a lesser number of seats because currently the state governments determine the fees of uh, private medical institutions for about 85 percentage of seats so they feel that the capping of fees with respect to only 50 percentage of seats will provide for differences in admissions with respect to the poor sections and rich sections of the population then the next concern was with respect to the overriding powers which was given to the center by this act now the government says that uh, the citizens expect government to address issues during the public emergencies so that is why they have given overriding powers to the center so like this you can mention the concerns which we discussed during the analysis and you can also add your own view points based on today's analysis with this we have come to the end of today's analysis sessions if you like the video don't forget to like comment and share and do subscribe to shankar ias academy youtube channel for more updates related to civil service examination preparation